UFC Vegas 89 goes down this weekend at the Apex, and it is headlined by a women's flyweight matchup between Amanda Hibas and Rose Namajunas. The co-main event sees heavyweights throw down between Carl Williams and Justin Taffa, but there are some decent fights on the rest of the card, which makes this interesting enough to tune in on the weekend of an action-packed weekend of fights as well. Reminder, there is Bellator going down on Friday, of which I've dropped a full card breakdown for that on the YouTube channel yesterday, so make sure you guys check that out if you haven't already. And if you're looking for breakdowns for LFA and Octagon, which go down on Saturday as well, those will be in written form on the Patreon page. Check those those breakdowns out link for that is in the description below all right i don't want to waste too much more time here i want to get right into the breakdowns for you guys so without further ado i hope you're laced up and ready to go because we're off and running with the first fight of the night and it comes in the form of a heavyweight matchup between mohammed usman and mick parkin this is a matchup between two guys that the public doesn't seem very high on, although I do think Mick Parkin is better than people are leading them on to believe. He is a complete heavyweight in the fact that he has a solid grappling game, a decent enough striking game, although I would like to see a little bit more power from him in that realm. But his ability to scramble at this weight class is very uh, pleasing, especially against the guys that he's been going up against. Here against Usman, he might look like he might not have the wrestling advantage, but I think that he will, especially when they started getting into grappling and uh, scrambling situations. I expect Parkman to really wear on Usman here, put together a better body of work, and likely get a third round stoppage, although my official prediction will be Parkin by decision. Next up, we got Igor Severino going up against Andre Lima. Two guys that just got off the contender series, but I think Severino is a little bit more well-rounded by than the a kickboxing style that Andre Lima brings to the table. Lima has showcased some decent grappling of his own, but a lot of it is to try to buy time and try to catch his breath rather than actually looking to attack and finish submissions. I think Severino will be pushing him in the striking realm and eventually drag this fight to the ground where he should be able to control Lima, really wear on Lima, and potentially find uh, major success in deep waters here. But I think we see Severino take this fight on the scorecards. Next up, we got Montserrat Rendon going up against Daria Zelezniakova. Uh, this is a matchup between two fighters that are still trying to find their way in the UFC. Rendon pulled off a plus 200 underdog upset last time around in her UFC debut against Tamir Svidal. And I think she is alive to pull off another upset here. Her straight shots down the pipe, her strength, her ability to keep this fight upright, and her BJJ brown belt should keep her out of any trouble. And Daria tries to put her in if she decides to take this fight to the ground. But I think Rendon's persistence in terms of throwing straight shots down the pipe could really frustrate Daria and likely allow Rendon to land the more damaging blows and win this fight on the scorecards. Next up, we got Jarnell Aarons going up against Steven Wynn. Wynn looking to make his UFC debut after his third attempt on the contender series finally allowed him to get a UFC contract. I think he is the far superior striker here, and I think his defensive grappling is good enough to thwart the judo black belt of Aarons, allowing Wynn to keep this fight standing, maybe even landing takedowns of his own in deep waters. But I think that will see Wynn put together a better body of work and win this fight on the scorecards. Next up, we got Miles Johns going up against Cody Gibson. Johns has been pretty much streaking recently and had a great performance against Dan Argueta last time around, but I really think it's his uh, recent union with Marathon MMA, which has made him a smarter and better fighter. He is a fighter that has been plagued with gas tank issues in the past, but he does a great job in deep waters now in terms of utilizing lateral movement and that one-two down the pipe occasionally to really damage his opponents and do good work, even if he's unable to get his grappling going. I think Gibson might have the technical striking advantage here, but I think the speed and constant movement as as well as the wrestling of Johns is going to keep Cody Gibson on the defensive for the majority of this matchup, allowing Johns to get his hand raised on the scorecards. Next up, we got Hikaru Hamosh going up against Julian Arosa. Very interesting matchup here, but I do think Hamosh is the far more skilled fighter all around. I think that he'll be able to put together a good body of work with his striking and eventually the takedowns where he should be able to control Arosa on the mat. Arosa might be live to throw up some submissions off of his back, but I think he's going to be unsuccessful in snatching anything that will get him give him victory, allowing Hamosh to grind this fight out and win a decision. Next up, we got Kurt Holliba 
going up against Trey Ogden. Hollabaugh coming off of the tough finale that he was able to get his UFC contract by defeating Austin Hubbard, where Trey Ogden is actually coming off of a no contest in a matchup where we possibly saw the best version of Ogden to date. Ogden is a solid BJJ black belt who has used grapple heavy approaches in the past to get his hand raised, but he's doing a great job in terms of utilizing his striking to eventually set up those takedowns to grind his opponents out from that top position and find submissions. It's going to be tough to finish the very durable and veteran savvy Kurt Holaba, but I expect Trey Ogden to outstrike him in regards to staying mobile, moving laterally, landing his jab and one-two down the pipe, and eventually setting up takedowns where he'll be able to grind out Holaba, who will be unable to catch Trey Ogden in any submissions. Give me Ogden and Ogden by decision. Next up, we got Fernando Padilla going up against Luis Pajuelo. This is an intriguing fight between Pajuelo, who just got into the UFC through the contender series, and Padilla, who's trying to bounce back from a loss to Kyle Nelson. Padilla will be the longer fighter here, and he might have some success in terms of sniping Pajuelo down the pipe, but I think Pajuelo's uh, aggression, forward movement, and just reckless striking style will cause Padilla some issues, causing Padilla to slow down and opening up finishing opportunities for Pajuelo to overwhelm him with a barrage of strikes and potentially get him out of there. The only thing that gives me some qualms is if Padilla is able to get the grappling going and choke Pajuelo here, but Pajuelo has a very solid durability and an ability to battle through adversity, and I think that's going to be too much for Padilla to deal with, allowing Pajuelo to finish him in the second or third round. Next up, we got Billy Quarantillo going up against Yusuf Zalal. Zalal returning to the UFC after going 0-3-1 through his last four fights with the promotion. He did pick up three straight first-round victories on the regional scene to eventually set up this return to the promotion, but I think that we'll see a better and smarter Zalal. I think he is the better striker here compared to Quarantillo, who normally utilizes a pressure-heavy approach against his opponents to break them and either finish them late or win the second and third rounds and get his hand raised on the scorecards. But Zalal will be tough to take down, in my opinion, as I don't rate the 23% takedown accuracy rate of Quarantillo too high. But I do have some questions if he's able to open up the back of Zalal in a clinch position and possibly hop on the back and get some control time there. But if Zalal is able to keep this fight standing, which I think he can, as an underdog, he is not a bad shot here to go out there and touch up Quarantillo on the feet and win this fight on the scorecards. Next up, the fight that I'm probably most excited about this weekend, Peyton Talbot against against Cameron Simon. Very intriguing bantamweight matchup here. Ultimately, I think it's going to be Talbot's cleaner striking approach that will touch up Simon from distance and cause Simon a ton of problems. Simon is similar to Drickus Duplessis his training partner, who utilizes a lot of their physical traits to try to get their wins with their power, explosivity, and strength. But I think that's going to be hard for him to overcome the striking style of Talbot, especially if he looks to try to get this to the ground. Talbot should be able to keep it standing. And then I do think that he'll be the cleaner striker, landing shots on Simon from distance and winning this fight on the scorecards. Next up, we got Edmund Shabazian going up against AJ Dobson. The big knock on Shabazian has always been his cardio, but I believe this is a matchup where he should be able to dictate the pace and where the fight actually takes place. I think he'll be able to put some, together some decent striking, land the quicker, faster shots down the pipe, and I think he'll eventually open up a club and sub opportunity for himself in the second round of this matchup. Next up, we got Carl Williams going up against Justin Toffa in the co-main event. Williams is obviously very strong when he's able to get his opponents to the ground, and there are some big question marks in regards to Toffa's take down defense he is at a 100% takedown defense rate but that's only because he's only faced two takedown attempts in his entire UFC career Williams will be looking to challenge that 100% takedown defense rate but I think Williams inability to finish Toffa will come back to bite him in the ass in the second and third rounds as Toffa starts to knock walk him down land some leg kicks and eventually open up a big opportunity to find the knockout give me Toffa and Toffa by knockout and the main event we got Amanda Hibas taking on Rose Nami Yunus in a very important fight for both of these women. Ultimately, I think it's going to be Rose's technical striking that will eventually allow her to get the knockout victory in this matchup. I think that we'll see her touch up Hibas, maybe deal with some adversity in the grappling realm, but I think that we'll see her put Hibas into some sort of trap and that will allow her to line up that head kick and put Hibas out. 
Ebus normally has great durability and she may not go clean out. So I might have to walk my words back in regards to that. But that should set up an opportunity for Rose to really let go with the barrage of strikes and end this fight with some sort of uh, club and drum situation where she drops her with a head kick and follows up with a bunch of ground and pound to end up getting her hand raised. Give me Rose and Rose by knockout. There you guys go. Quick picks for UFC Vegas 89. Reminder, we do have the free parlay video dropping later on for you today. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you're looking for the Bellator full card breakdown, I dropped that last night. So check the uh, YouTube page for that. And then LFA and Octagon going down this weekend as well. You guys can find full breakdowns for all those cards on the uh, Patreon page. Link in the description below. All right. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Uh, sorry, later today for the free parlay and tomorrow for the three best prop bets. Peace.